just entered the room, I ask that you turn or mute your cell phone before we get started here. Joining us now are members of the Midwestern State Mustangs football team. On the far left, we have Jake Glover. Jake is a junior quarterback from White Settlement, Texas. In the center of our podium is head coach Bill Maskell. And on the near side here, we have wide receiver Joe Sanders. Joe is a junior from Rockdale, Texas. Coach, first your uh, impression is on very tough fight game. <laughs> you want my real impression? <laughs> They, uh, you know, we, we uh, like I told the team, it was too little, too late. You know, I think they fought the butt off. Uh, there was time in the third quarter, early fourth, it was fourth quarter. It was fourth quarter that I looked in the eyes and challenged them, and we just needed a spark. When we got that spark, then, then our kids started clicking, and uh, we just ran out of time. Um, you know, the pass interference call didn't help us, and then, uh, uh, the next call we got um, with well, the offense driving the ball down didn't help us. And, um, but I, you know, they, I think our kids fought hard, and uh, you know, we're, and I don't think we particularly when you rush for 75 yards when we've been able to average 300 and some yards rushing in the past. Um, yeah, we got an experienced line, but we got we got we're good enough to rush for more than 75 yards. You got to give them credit. They did a good job of stopping our run. Which we weren't able to run inside, we weren't able to run outside, and and uh, we probably should have started throwing the ball a little bit earlier. Follow up a little bit on that, Tommy. And I mean, 2.2 yards from the Midwestern State rushing team is just not. I don't think we've done that in 12 years. You know, um, and like I said, it, it probably has a lot to do with what what they were doing, and has a lot to do with what we weren't doing. Um, but nonetheless, even though we're rushing for 75 yards, we're still in position to win the ball game at the end of the game. But we didn't get we didn't get it done, and it was it took us, you know, they took that opening drive of the third quarter. I think that was was a telltale of what they were going to do, and uh, we weren't able to stop their bubble. First half they bubbled outside and moved the ball, and they and they templed us. Those two things hurt us, and then the second half they bubbled into the sideline. And they templed us in that first drive. They just marched right down the field, and then now all of a sudden we're, you know, we're we're probably off balance some, and and then they, uh, then they started running that little back, and then when we did get to the quarterback, we didn't get to him, and he moved up the field. So we we'll just have to look at the film and uh, regroup and recover and get ready to play next week. You know, we'll find out what we did right, and what we did wrong, and we got a good football team. We're not going to sing them by the end of the season for us. I can tell you that right now. Questions for the Mustangs. What have you learned from this game going into the rest of the season? Well, I, I think that we learned that we've got a, you know, we, 10 to 7 at half. And what, I think we went up in the first quarter, is that right, 10 to nothing? Then they got a touchdown and made it 10 to 7. And then they came out in the second, third quarter, made it 14 to, 14 to 10. And at that time, we're not particularly playing really well. Um, so we've got to we've got to do a better job of realizing that the game is four quarters. And what do we learn? We learn that we're capable of coming back. What do we we've got to learn how to finish? We've got a young football team, real young football team. But uh, like I told them at halftime, it's, we're 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 older now than what we were to start the beginning of the game. So that's you know we, we've got to get bypass the, the being youth. Any other questions? You're talking, your well, you're talking about your defense, kind of disappearing in the third quarter? You know, our defense, I thought, played really, really well uh, until they scored the first score in the first half. I thought they played, I mean, they tackled well, they, they, they ran to the ball, we got off blocks. I'm not going to tell you that we got tired until I watched the tape. You know, I kind of polled the kids afterwards, and, you know, I think we're in good condition. Um, I, I, I can't tell you what happened, I, because I don't know. Um, but our defense wasn't able to stop the running game inside on the inside zone with the back and then and then going outside with their outside zone or what probably was what we call zone one way and the back going opposite. And then they get then they convert that into long runs and get a little momentum and that hurts. We, we didn't do a good job of stopping running and passing. Look at their passing. 24 of 29. I mean come on. You know we're, that's not real. It's not, it's not great pass coverage when you're 24 out of 29. 
can do a better job there as well. So you look at the whole package and didn't run the ball well. We didn't stop the run. We darn sure didn't stop the passing game with 24 and 29. With both front sevens, what was it that contributed to their success in your the struggle to start the game? Well, I, you know, I would, it would appear that they outplayed us in, uh, in both offensive line and defensive line. I'm gonna, that's what I, I have to watch the tape and see if if we're just uh, not finishing the block or our back's not hitting the hole. But it would appear that, that uh, they they were uh, outplayed both sides of you know, the lines. And like you said, despite that, you were still in the game to the end. Is, yeah. that, is there a white light at the end of the tunnel for your team? That oh, yeah, know? yeah. I, this team's not going to give up. I mean, I, I, I've said all along I like this team. They'll do anything you ask them to do. Uh, we were a little bewildered in that fourth quarter when the score was 21 to 10 I, you know I think our kids were you know they, they just they looked like they'd seen a ghost but all we needed was a spark of hope and we got that with Jake's long scrambled touchdown pass and from that point on we were we were okay until the, we ran out of time at the end of the game and didn't convert fourth down talk about that scramble coach did you think he got a little too far back there well you know uh, the scramble is a two-fold deal. You know, it's the receivers and running backs have got to get in line with where the quarterback is, and then the quarterback's got to get rid of the ball. And, uh, you know, Jake is, is, is moving around back there, and sometimes it works and sometimes it didn't. And the beginning, the, the, that touchdown worked. The last play of the game didn't work. You know, he's got to have our, – our, they're, cru they're crushing our tackles. Our quarterbacks have got to have – we've got to stop the momentum, and our quarterbacks have got to be able to step up in the pocket, and they're bringing their end so hard. and. And we're not we're not holding on closer to the line of scrimmage, if you will. Yes. Jake, despite being ahead early in the game, having such a close comeback towards the end of the game, you guys are feeling kind of dejected right now. What's it going to take for you to come back to be ready for next week? Uh, I think to come back next week, we just got to you know chew this up, swallow it, and then move on. I mean, we got to prepare for next week. Uh, we got another opponent. This game's over. Yeah, it hurts, but we got to move on. We got to prepare for next week and come out and win. Anything specific that you're going to work on? Uh, like Coach said, stepping up in the pocket more. I think I was a little antsy back there. I think I got to step up more and play from within the pocket and stop trying to make so many plays on my feet and take what the defense gives me. Thank you. Jake, how'd you feel when you were put in and you had the burden of making the comeback? Uh, there's no burden. I mean, it's just. You got to come in and execute, and I think we executed well. You just got to come in and take what the defense gives you, not try to do too much. Just, I mean, I keep saying it, but you got to take what the defense gives you. You can't try to force anything. You just got to read it and throw it. That's all you got to do. I had a great group of guys executing with me, doing what they're supposed to be doing. I thought we battled hard. We just came up short. Oh, definitely. I mean, every, every time you make a play, you know, you get that you get that uplift. And after those touchdowns, you know, I came back to the sideline and coach came up to me and he said, you know, I mean, you're up here right now, but you got to come back down and get level-headed and come back and make plays. And I, I thought we did that well, but again, we just came up short. Was the quarterback change? You think your logic did wrong or you just need a spark? No, I, you know, I, um, I thought about it in the first half. And uh, Sabadrick hadn't played, and we wanted to, didn't want him to feel like, as we would with Jake, that we've lost confidence. And, you know, I think Sabadrick, in my opinion, was trying to do too much, and uh, might have been pressing a little bit. And I felt like that we needed a spark, and that's kind of what I've been saying all along with our quarterbacks: is that, you know, next week it might be Jake, and Beaver might be the spark. We, you know, we're gonna we got two good quarterbacks, and uh, they both bring something different to the table, and we're gonna be able to play with both. And, but it was all it was was a spark, you know. Just let's 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 get something in there, and that's okay. I mean, we practice every day with those guys with the first group, so the receivers are used to both of them. Anything in particular about the rivalry with Tarleton, the matchup? Well, it's you know, uh, and beating us two times in a row. I, I don't particularly care for that. Um, <laughs> matter of fact, I don't care for it. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they've got some of their coaches that used to coach coach and play for us. 
uh, I think that's more of a coaching thing than it is a playing thing. I don't, I don't think any of our current yeah. players know anything about yeah. their coaches. So, you know, but it has developed into a strong rivalry, and that's good for college football. It's good for our conference. Out and uh, just execute uh, what the plays call, or coach calls, and if it's a run play, you just got to get in there and block. And then the, their safeties are playing real, real close to the line of scrimmage, getting really involved in the run game. So when we turn to the pass, we ended up I mean, making the making the plays. Having been a quarterback before in this system, how much does that help you in knowing just what they're looking for when you're out there running around? It helps a lot because. <clears throat> I mean, I was sitting in the meetings like two years ago with Jake, and we're seeing the same thing on film, what they're doing, like whatever he sees. I mean, I'm sure I'm seeing the same thing, whatever the safeties are doing, if they're high. And I know to bend it in the middle on those uh, post routes that I was catching, if they're sitting one high, I know how to keep it down the seam, and that's what Jake's looking for, and I know how to run it. Is that what happened on that touchdown? Excuse me? It hit you in the seam? Is that just what happened on that touchdown? Uh, actually, I was seeing that. Uh, we actually, I bended uh, the safety was on the hash, so I came inside of the linebacker and just broke it off on the safety across the middle, and Jake found me for the touchdown. Any further questions for the Mustangs? All right, thank you, gentlemen. Best of luck next week.